Hello, and welcome to this short video walkthrough of HCL One Test Server. We'll start with a quick introduction to our demo application, Emerald. This is a reference implementation of HCL Commerce, which for our purposes is the system under test. Emerald is a storefront app offering furniture to consumers. And for the purposes of our demo, we'll concentrate on the familiar process of finding products, adding them to a cart, then checking out and processing payment. We'll cover this from different perspectives, looking at UI tests in the browser, API tests and performance tests. Let's log into the OneTest server and navigate to our Emerald project. In the overview page, we can see information about the tests we've been running. We see the breakdown of different test assets and test types that make up the project. We see information about the most recently run tests, some scheduled performance tests due to run later tonight. We see recently added and modified tests that our team have been working on. And we see an overall status for the tests in our project. Glancing back to the breakdown of tests, we observe that we have a heavy dependence on performance and UI tests, and there are currently no API tests being used. So let's change that. We use Git as our data store for tests, and you can see we've already connected four repositories for UI, performance, and some open source test assets. It's a simple task of cloning the repository for our API tests, and within a couple of seconds, they become available to the project. Now let's run the API suites we've just loaded. Each suite comprises many individual tests. So when we execute the suite, we have the option to set or override properties across them all. For instance, we'll want to label our tests so the results are easy to identify and group later. In this case, we're working on Emerald version 916 and we're in Sprint 1. We also set values such as the environment corresponding to the physical environment we're testing. And if we wanted to, we could override any test data or variables being used, or even the locations where the tests are physically running. Moving over to the results page, we see the two API suites we ran, and that they both passed their assertions. Drilling into the details, we see a useful audit of when the test was run, who triggered it, which branch we were running against, which version of the test was used, and of course, we could dive into the API test report to see the drill down if we wanted. Of more interest is the test register users and add address. This seems to have failed during the last execution. And I can see that the test failed after around three minutes. And it doesn't look as if anyone's raised the JIRA ticket, so worth investigating. Opening the functional test report, we can expand each of the test steps up to the point of failure. The test is registering users in the Emerald system, and it looks like the failure happened just after clicking Complete Registration. Looking at the failing verification point and the associated screenshot, we can see the user already existed in the system, causing the test to fail as the navigation stalled. This doesn't look like a defect in the Emerald application, so for now, we'll assume it's a data issue. The test has a reference to a CSV file, users.csv and we can see the file contents or even edit them here in the one test server. To rerun the test in this environment, we'll need a different set of users, which could be a burden, especially if we have thousands of rows to edit or if we just don't have the time. Luckily, we've already set up one test data with enough information to generate new, synthetically generated GDPR compliant users, which we can have the register users test pick up. In this case, the data we need is quite simple, but don't let that fool you. One test data is a powerful engine for complex data needs, whether you're outputting CSVs, JSON or XML, or whether you're writing complex relational data into databases. Here we have a first name, which is randomly selected from a sample file containing thousands of names. Last names generated the same way, just using a different column from the seed data. Our phone number gets generated using a regular expression, and you can see we provide a library of useful examples that you can add to. Finally, the email address. This uses a function to concatenate our random first and last name along with our chosen domain name. So the whole data record looks consistent and realistic.
Now we know where to get our data, we can go back and re-execute the register user's test. This time, we'll override the CSV file that was baked into the tests and ask one test data to provide three generated records that the test will register in Emerald. The test will take a few minutes to run, so we'll come back in a few minutes. Meanwhile, we might want to take another look at some of our performance testing, but this time we'll want to add some resource monitoring so we have a good picture of what's happening in the environment under test as we load it up. There are several different ways we can collect data, including monitors for some legacy apps like SAP, Oracle or WebSphere, which are not shown here. We're currently running all our software in the HCL Sophie sandbox, which in this instance is backed off to the Google Cloud Platform. And this environment has an open source Prometheus server running and collecting data, which we can use to pull in useful metrics about our Kubernetes cluster and the Emerald pods that we're putting under load. After we connect, we can see the data that's being exposed in this server. In this case, it's quite a limited set of CPU, memory and IO metrics. But we can also create our own queries using PromQL to format the data however we want. We just have one resource monitor at this point, but it's a good idea to label it as we might add more later and we'll want to easily identify them. A quick look at the data shows we're connected and the metrics are being collected. Back in our performance test, we can select the Emerald Metrics Monitor under the Resource Monitoring tab. And now those metrics will be stored in our performance report when we come to analyze the results of our test later. Checking the progress page for our two test executions. When it's complete, we can take a look at the register user's test report. Obviously the test passed this time around and scrolling through the step data, we can see the new randomly generated users that we've registered in Emerald. Our performance test takes a while to run, but we can look at the analytics dashboard to check that everything's running to plan. Here we can see there are currently no errors identified, and we can see the detail about performance of the page, the page elements, and a breakdown of connection, render, and network timing. There are many other charts and reports we'll want to look at once the test is complete, but for now, glancing at the average response times and checking our resource monitors are being captured is enough for me to go and get on with something else. I'll take one last look at my project overview. Nothing for my boss to complain about here. And who knows, maybe I will make it to the pub after all. Thank you.